Hello Scruff Tards, welcome to the War Zone. I'm Scruffy and this is Scruffy Tales. And we're gonna take a quick look at what might be the most effective tank in Ukraine and how the ammunition plays a big part of it all. And before moving on, I'm not an expert, I have no clue what I'm talking about, so people will probably correct me like you wouldn't believe down in the comment section. So always take a look in the comment section because there will always be some nerd who knows a little bit too much about these uh, things. So uh, yeah, check out the comment section in case people will correct me. So what? do tanks use when they shoot at each other? Well, they use sable rounds. And what is a sable round? Well, here you have tank ammunition. Uh, as you can see, they're rather large. So, uh, and here you have a guy, he's picking up uh, ammunition from the ammo compartment in the turret. He turns around and then pushes it into the gun itself. So what happens? Well, when you fire one of these things, this, is what will go down the barrel and as you can see the uh, arrow part here it's rather narrow it's like 20 30 uh, millimeters wide uh, but the gun itself uh, is 120 millimeters uh, of caliber so quite smaller than the actual gun so you need this the sabo part now this is three or four sections that come together. And what this does is it basically acts like a sled that would, travels down the barrel, keeping the arrow in place. And once all of this leaves the barrel, the sabo comes apart and flies off and uh, ends up, you know, uh, somewhere out in the terrain. So if a tank is firing, don't stand, you know, in front of it or to the sides because these things will be flying off and could potentially hit you so anyway so they act like a sled within the barrel and guides uh, the arrow down the barrel and as soon as everything leaves the barrel they fly off and the arrow continues on its own towards the target right so what does these what does the arrows look like well they look like these are the fin stabilized rods or arrows that you destroy enemy tanks with it's basic physics kinetic energy you have a rod of solid metal that hits solid armor and then just tries to punch its way through and i think it's interesting we take a look at this this is the latest uh, uh, from Rheinmetall for the leopard 2 tanks dm53 and take a look at the tip. It's so fascinating because if we were only looking at this image, I'm thinking a lot of people would uh, come to the conclusion that it was the uh, tip of a bodkin arrow or a Roman uh, pila. You know, the throwing the javelins that Romans used. Same shape, exact same shape on the bodkin arrows and the pila. So here we are 2,000 years later after the Roman Empire and armor penetrating weapons are still basically designed the same way. How incredible is that? Anyway, why am I uh, highlighting Rheinmetall DM-53? Well, uh, the German DM-53 was designed to defeat the next generation of Russian tanks and to get maximum performance out of the new and longer L55 120mm main gun that was developed for the German Leopard 2. Uh, so the latest Leopard 2s or Leopard 2s in general, they have this longer gun than what, than what was standard before that. So the L55 is over a meter longer than the older L44 meaning the cannon can accumulate more speed and kinetic force behind each shot fired, making the gun not only more powerful and deadly against armored targets, but also more accurate. So to maximize the capabilities of this new gun, 
Rheinmetall developed the DM53. So this is specifically designed for the new gun. All of these can be fired in uh, Rheinmetall guns. Uh, L44, L55 doesn't matter, but this, the DM53, was specifically designed to uh, be used with the L55 to maximize the effect of that longer, more accurate, more deadly gun. But you can't just throw in ammunition into any Leopard 2 and just have at it. Uh, it works on paper, obviously, in theory. But uh, to truly maximize effect, you need uh, to program the uh, targeting computers with the characteristics of the ammunition you're bringing with you. So, if you put the DM-53 into a tank that is not uh, upgraded to use the DM-53, you lose accuracy at range. And this is the problem with some of the tanks that Ukraine has received from other countries, most notably Poland. So the Leopard 2 needs a targeting system that is programmed to accurately calculate the trajectory of each round loaded. The Polish and potentially other uh, Leopard 2s that have been donated to Ukraine have not been upgraded to calculate the trajectory of the DM-53. So therefore must rely on the inferior DM-33, despite having the longer barrel, uh, the L-55 gun. So while the DM-33 is still hard-hitting and capable, it may struggle against upgraded T-72s, T-80s, and T-90s, uh, all depending on the angle and where you actually land a hit. So tanks and fighter jets are kind of similar in this. Yes, you can have a cool fighter jet and you can have a very cool tank, but if the fighter jet doesn't have a very capable missile, then the enemy will win the engagements. And same thing goes for tank. If the tank doesn't have capable ammunition, then the enemy has the upper hand. So you need the correct ammunition, the correct missile to win the engagements, even if the fighter jet or the tank itself are creme de la creme and uh, the best designs around. If you don't have the gun, if you don't have the missile, if you don't have the radar, if you don't have the targeting system available, uh, you will lose most engagements, even if the vehicle itself is top notch. We should note, though, that there are plenty of tanks in Ukraine that rely on the new and advanced DM 53, but there are several tanks in use by Ukraine that have to uh, stick with the older DM-33 rounds, unfortunately. But there are plenty of Leopard 2s in Ukraine that can fire uh, DM-53s. So moving on to the Swedish variant of the Leopard 2, the SRV-122A. Uh, we have seen photos that show the crew of these Swedish tanks uh, where they are loading the highly advanced DM-53 rounds into the uh, STRV-122. And even though the DM-53 is designed for optimal performance from the new and longer L-55 guns used by more modern designs of the Leopard 2, the DM-53 is still a high-tech tank killer, even when fired from the older L-44 gun on the STRV-122. And yes, the Swedish uh, gun, or the Swedish tank, has that older, shorter barrel uh, that is uh, a bit, uh, what is it, 1.3 meters shorter, I think it is, than the L55 gun on more modern Leopard 2s. And sticking a bit with the SRV-122, uh, Sweden early on decided to purchase and equip uh, Israeli Sabre rounds for the SRV-122. Uh, the Israeli M322 Sable rounds, uh, capable of penetrating 658 millimeters of armor at 2 kilometers. And at 2 kilometers, these rounds travel at 130 meters per second. 
if we compare that to what is available data, uh, accurate or not, I don't know, uh, concerning the DM53, the DM53 travels at 110 meters per second at two kilometers. And we also know from uh, open source intelligence that the DM43, the slightly, slightly smaller uh, saber round uh, from Rheinmetall, uh, it is capable of penetrating 560 millimeters of armor at two kilometers. And it has a velocity of 100 meters per second at two kilometers. So with these stats in mind, can the DM-53 from Rheinmetall rival the Israeli M322 that SRV 122s relies on as its standard and tank ammunition? So as we know, Sweden has supplied 10 SRV 122s in total to Ukraine. All of them came with Barracuda camouflage that essentially made them almost invisible to thermals and uh, other uh, uh, sensors, even radar to some extent. And uh, we know that the SRV-122 is Ukraine's most heavily armored tank, because when Sweden uh, purchased the uh, Leopard 2, they added three tons of armor to it, uh, including um, top armor on top of the turret and stuff like that. So before going into this war, the SRV-122s already had very capable protection from top attacks. And yes, it has the older L-44 gun, uh, which uh, gives it slightly less accuracy at range and not potentially not all that much kinetic force at range. Uh, but it also doesn't end up getting caught on trees as easily in forests, and it can more easily swing the gun around in an urban environment without getting stuck on telephone poles, light posts, and rubble, and what have you. Uh, interesting note about the Swedish tank is that the smoke launchers, they are French in origin, can double as grenade launchers. So you can actually load the smoke launchers with uh, grenades so you can utilize the grenade these launchers uh, to assault enemy positions uh, head-on basically at point-blank range so and of course um, equip the swedish tank with either the german dm53 or its basic ammunition the israeli m322 and the tank is incredibly deadly uh, capable of firing uh, some of the most uh, devastating anti-tank ammunition available on the planet. So, it does appear as if the SRV-122's stealth capabilities, if we should call it, could call it that, with the Barracuda camouflage, <clears throat> combined with its excellent armor and its extremely capable ammunition, I mean, seems that all of this makes the Swedish tank the most aggressive, most durable, and the most deadly tank on the battlefields of Ukraine. And this is what the Ukrainians themselves tells us. Uh, they are, after all, able to compare the various tanks next to each other. And they tell us that the excellent armor of the Swedish tank makes it... Uh, a tank that is very much suited for aggressive action against the Russian invaders. And the STRV-122s are of course attached to the 21st Mechanized Brigade, currently defending Terni from Russian aggression. Uh, Terni is a vital town that must be uh, held, because if the Russians can grab the town, then they can start trying to uh, secure the bridges over the river so this is where we are seeing uh, uh, SRV 122s and CV 90s supported by archers in another regiment uh, doing their best to hold the line and deny the Russians any chance of advancing further towards Terni. And as it happens, uh, I was putting this video together yesterday and today 
uh, YouTube dropped a video dealing with the SRV22 and its deployment to Ukraine. So I will leave a link uh, to that video down below. And in that video, they tell us that the SRV122 has seen action up in Makivka. As you can see, that is somewhat north of Terni. And the Ukrainians in this video, they tell us how reliable this tank is and that it can take basically any punishment uh, the Russians are throwing at it. Interestingly, we see a couple of patches in the video. Uh, we see the lion that is uh, the uh, emblem of the Skorabori regiment, a very old regiment in Sweden, centuries old took part in uh, battles during the Third Year War, in the Great Northern War, uh, had a famous engagement against the elite Russian guards uh, when the Swedes were outnumbered 13,000 to 4,000. And in true Carolean fashion, the Skorabor regiment fixed bayonets and charged a numerically superior enemy and won the day. And we can also see uh, these tank patches. Uh, I do believe they, they kind of look Swedish, to be honest. Um, uh, patches that uh, show that these guys have uh, uh, mastered basic training for the SRV-122 uh, by Swedish Army standards. Uh, so that is what the tank and star insignia are. I believe they are the Swedish uh, training patches that they have actually become fully fledged tank crews by Swedish standards. So check that link out below. Um, it uh, was quite informative, if you ask me. And on a final note, STRV-122 stands for Stridsvagn-122. 122. 122 means the second Swedish tank with a 120 millimeter plus main gun. And the famous S tank uh, was, of course, the STRV 103, being the third Swedish tank with a 100 mm plus main gun, 105 mm to be more precise. And Stridsvagn can be translated as chariot or battle wagon. That's it. That's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you in the next one, and as always, go to Marsh, Ukraine. Give them hell.